Notice how those add to 1? Mm -hmm. You know that firm is exhibiting constant returns to scale when they add to 1. All you have to do is eyeball the Cobb Douglas fraction function. When the exponents add to less than 1, you know that that firm is less than 1. See how it's less than 1 third plus a quarter? They have. This firm is exhibiting decreasing returns to scale. Or when the sum is more than 1, greater than 1, you can eyeball and see that, that is increasing in terms of scale, increasing scale. Oh my god, it's trying to kill me. And so that's something nice about it. And it maps out firms pretty well and what they do. And in fact, if you take this production function for, say, Q100, and you actually plug in the quantities of capital and labor, that with all the quantities of capital and labor that would lead to 100, you would get a shape that looks like this, Q100. That's how it looked with all the different quantities. If you did the math and sort of like plugged in all the different quantities of capital and labor that lead to 100, it would take that shape. Why would it take that shape? It would take that shape because there is This will sound like the utility sites. If you are a firm using an awful lot of labor and not much capital, the firm can essentially drop a lot of workers, trade it in for just a little bit of machinery, and still produce the same amount of good. Essentially, a firm that uses a lot of labor, the last workers they use are not very productive. Firms often exhibit a decreasing marginal product of labor when they use a lot of labor. Same thing up here on the opposite side. If the firm was using loads of machinery but not many workers to produce 100, they can actually trade a whole lot of machinery for just a few workers and still produce the 100 that they're trying to produce. Another way of thinking about that would be to take a little simple one, like k to one half, l to one half. Take that production function there. What is the, how would you find, and I'll show you, how would you find the value of each worker to the firm? How much does each worker produce? This is called the marginal product of labor. Well, the way you would do that is you would look at, rather than all the workers, you would just look at one worker at a time. You would hold capital constant at some level, hold capital constant at say 100. And then you would go, how productive is each worker, one at a time? One at a time means the derivative of this. And so holding capital constant at 100, the function becomes k out, 10 out of 1 half, the square root of 100. And then you take the derivative of that and you get 5L to the minus 1 half, which is just equal to. 5 divided by L to the 1 half. What? I'm just... Are we going to calculate these? It's just a simple... I mean, <laughs> so that's a yes. Yes, maybe. So could you explain that again? Sure. Yeah. Awesome. All right. And I can do it another... It's just taking yeah. the... If you want to find the marginal product of labor, rather than the production of all the workers together, you hold capital constant at some level. And then you take the derivative with respect to labor. The partial derivative with respect okay, to labor. Hold, hold on, let's write that down. You hold, hold capital, capital constant, constant. You don't change it, and then you see how does quantity vary as we vary labor. How does quantity vary as we vary labor? That makes sense. And one half, k to the one half, times L to the minus one half. It's just that in all we're going to use is the simplest rule of taking a derivative, which is just take the exponent, multiply it by the front of the equation, and then subtract one from the exponent. That's the simple power function rule of calculus. It's sort of, and that's how I took that derivative. And then I've just reorganized this into one half, k to the one half, divided by L to the one half. But I said I was holding capital constant at 100. That's how I got the. 10 over 
two alpha one half here. Or five divided by alpha one half. Why is it ten? Which if you graph that out, marginal product of labor combined to L, it's just falling, it's declining. What does that mean? 7-Eleven on Oxford and College Park, that has this characteristic. The first worker is the most productive because he opens or she opens the store. Most productive worker, because that gets the store open, they can sell products, they can serve someone to stock the shelves. Worker number two is not as useful as worker one at 7-Eleven. Worker three is not as useful as worker two. There's generally a decline in the usefulness of workers. That's how this production function looks. Can you just refresh me as to why we took the square root of 100 instead of... Because it's 2 to 1 half power, and that's the square root. One half oh, power square right. Root. Okay. And so, there's a reason I'm sort of showing this, in part because I want to think about the productivity of a worker. That's how you find it. This is the relative value of workers to the firm. I could do the same thing, which I'm not going to do, but if I do the same exact thing, holding labor <laughs> constant, I can find the marginal product of capital, the worth of machinery to the firm. I hold labor constant, and then take the partial derivative with respect to capital, and I would get, rather than 5 over L one half, I would get 5 over K to one half, which was held out constant at 100. If I decided, if I weren't holding k constant 100, but rather holding k constant 25, then this would have become 5 halves out of 1 half. Or the productivity of workers would be lower. Same downward sloping, but lower. 5 out of, so for these two graphs here, 5 over L 1 half, or 5 over 2 times L 1 half, here's how they look. They both show decreasing marginal product of labor. The one, five out of one half, looks like this. The five over two times out of one half looks like this. I meant to talk about negative economics more, but I will next week. But that's just 2.5 out of the one half? That's all it is. Okay. But this is why it's nice to build human capital, but if you are in an economy where there's just no investment, and you have lots of human capital, much of the, what explains how valuable you are as a worker is not just your own skills and human capital, but it's what machinery you have in front of you. And so you're, if you're in a woefully undercapitalized, or if you have terrible software and a weak computer that you're using in a poor country, uh, the best way to make you more productive immediately would be to get you better equipment. And in fact, when we look at development for poorer countries, more important than even human capital building initially is just getting some investment. 